What's up? I am Photo John for PhotographyReview.com. No pretense. You already read the uh, video and article title, so you know what it is. But still, it's fun to open the box in front of you. Sometimes there are surprises in here, even I don't know about. Like this one has a sweet envelope. Let's see here. There we go. Fujifilm X-E1. And 18 to 55 zoom lens. Let's take this sucker out. I've been waiting for a while to get one of these. Very excited about this. Oh, it is a beauty. If I can get it out of the plastic. There we go. Lens, of course, is in the box. But uh, basically, this is the second, well, not second generation, but second model of uh, uh, interchangeable lens mirrorless camera from Fujifilm. Um, it is a 16 megapixel. Uh, camera with an APS-C sensor. Um, Fujifilm uses a proprietary X-Trans sensor which delivers um, way better image quality than other, well, we'll see about the new cameras this year, but generally much better image quality than uh, regular APS-C sensors. People have compared the image quality from this and the X-Pro1, the, the uh, top of the line camera from Fujifilm. They've compared it to full frame. Now, I've compared closely and that's that's not accurate but still the fact that people make that comparison is a big deal well i've been playing with the xe1 for a couple weeks now i've taken tons of pictures with it shot studio tests and i think i've gotten to know it pretty well one of the main things to know about this camera is it's not really a beginner camera um, the controls are pretty much manual there's no uh, scene modes or uh, intelligent auto or anything like that Pretty much it's an old-fashioned traditional camera with an aperture ring to control the aperture and a shutter speed dial to control the shutter speed. The A on the shutter speed dial sets the camera to aperture priority and if you turn off the aperture here and put that on auto then it'll be on shutter priority and you can put them both on A and then you have regular auto like program mode um, and then you use the exposure compensation dial here. The controls are super comfortable and intuitive in exactly the right places. The shutter speed dial is a little hard to use, but uh, if you're in aperture priority or shutter priority and you use the exposure compensation dial, it's pretty damn easy to use. One feature that I really like that was kind of a surprise I didn't really realize, the pop-up flash is bounceable. That's a really nice feature. It helps you get much better uh, light quality when you're using the flash. Unlike the X-Pro1, the X-E1 does not have an optical viewfinder, the hybrid viewfinder that uh, people like so much with the X-Pro1 and the X-100. Notice there's no optical viewfinder window here. It just uses an electronic viewfinder, but the electronic viewfinder is a 2.3 million dot uh, EVF and, it, and it's beautiful. There's an electronic level in it. You can see all the information you need. It works great in low light. I shot night photos with it with no problem. And honestly, I didn't miss the optical viewfinder one bit. The XE1 feels great. It has magnesium front and back covers and it's lighter than you'd expect. It was definitely lighter than I expected, but it still has a really great feel. Feels metallic, solid, but still it's pretty light. Another important thing to talk about here is the uh, 18 to 55 XF zoom lens here. This is the first zoom lens that Fujifilm has released for the X series cameras. If the X series cameras were traditional rangefinder cameras, you wouldn't be able to use a zoom lens because you can't zoom with an optical rangefinder viewfinder. But with the EVF, which sees through the lens, it's no problem to use a zoom lens. So that makes this camera pretty flexible. As much as everybody talks about how great prime lenses are and loves prime lenses, myself included, I prefer using zoom lenses because they're that much more flexible and you can just carry one. The 18-55 XF zoom 
has optical image stabilization, which you can turn on and off on the lens. That's right there, there's a little switch. And the image stabilization works great. I shot down to a 15th of a second, no problem. You could shoot slower if you were steadier than me or you braced yourself up against a tree or something. And overall, I really like this lens. Uh, I do wish I had something a little longer, but this lens worked really well. And it's a fast aperture lens too. Unlike most 18 to 55 zoom lenses for APS-C cameras, it's an f2.8 to f4 lens. Most of them are f3.5 to 5.6. So that's good for shooting in low light and for depth of field control. Let's take a quick look at the camera's menus. The main menu is pretty straightforward and what you'd expect. There's also a Q menu, buttons located right here, that gives you access to settings you're gonna use the most, like image quality, it says right there, whatever you're on, and you change settings with this dial right here, fine, normal, raw plus fine, film simulation, that's an interesting feature of Fujifilm cameras. It lets you pick a film type to simulate if there's a particular film type look that you want. Dynamic range, this is the dynamic range setting where you can expand the dynamic range and it makes a HDR image in camera. The settings are 100, 200, and 400, which uh, I assume is expanded uh, in a percentage. And there's also ISO here. You can change it with the dial. And there's also an FN button on top of the camera, which gives you even quicker access if you have it programmed for ISO like I do. Also, we should look at the drive menu. There's some stuff hidden in here that took me a while to find. Still image is the main setting, then continuous. It actually does six frames per second. That is uh, very good for a sports camera. You can actually shoot pretty quick action with this. Auto exposure bracketing, ISO bracketing, film simulation bracketing, that's interesting. Dynamic range bracketing, I use this and uh, there are samples on the gallery online. You'll see those in the written review when it's live. And motion panorama, motion panorama is cool. You just hold down the shutter release button and pan with the camera and the camera stitches together in camera a JPEG panoramic image. The movie mode's also in here. That's kind of hidden, it took me a while to find it. I actually found it by accident when the camera ended up on movie mode somehow and I didn't know how to get it back out. So it's nice to know that it's there now. All right, now to the most important thing, taking a look at some photos. I shot a little bit of everything with this camera from studio tests to landscape photos to architecture to food and some party photos, which is what you see here. I use the XE1 mostly in aperture priority mode using auto ISO because the image quality was good enough that I could totally trust the high ISO. These next two photos taken at the Salt Lake City and County Building in the Salt Lake City Public Library show why I like the XE1 as a street photography camera so much. The Iceberg Drive-In is just a great low light subject that was taken at ISO 1250. This photo of my wife Jenny in window light shows how well the XE1 handles uh, subtle colors and skin tones. This photo of the uh, in-laws watching a 3D movie is really pushing the limits of the sensor. It's at an ISO 6400 and pushed about a stop and post, and it's pretty noisy, but I think for the purposes it's still pretty good. I included this photo of the horse because it shows how good the dynamic range is. When I shot it and got it on the computer, it was almost pure silhouette. The sky was totally blown out, but in Lightroom, I was able to pull in the sky details and really make it shine. This lunch photo of some pasta I made, I just love the details in it, and it's at ISO 1250, so uh, that's pretty good detail for that high of ISO. Here's an example of the XE1's in-camera panorama mode. I just uh, held down the shutter release button and panned with the camera and it stitched all that together as a JPEG in camera. These next few shots show that the XE1 makes a pretty good outdoor camera and even a sports camera. I shot the mountain bike photo using the camera's 6 frames per second burst rate, which is really nice. This photo was taken at Snow Basin Ski Resort looking west over Ogden and the Great Salt Lake. And this one was taken at Solitude Ski Resort on a great ski day in the snow. This last photo of the Wasatch Mountains was taken near my house and I just wanted to wrap things up with a nice sunset landscape image. 
I hope you found our Fujifilm X-E1 slideshow instructional and useful, maybe even entertaining. I really have enjoyed using this camera. I think the X-Trans sensor is awesome. Um, I think that the X-E1 is a great value compared to the X-Pro1. I did not miss the hybrid viewfinder at all. The EVF, the electronic viewfinder, worked just fine for me. In my opinion, there are only two issues with this camera. One is, the main one in fact, is the autofocus is, is less than stellar. In low light, it's actually terrible. The first photo in that slideshow, the, the party photo, I had to actually pre-focus on a shiny spot on the ground in order to get that photo. When I did pre-focus correctly, I got great photos at that party. The low light and the bouncing flash, all that stuff worked great. But if you can't get good focus, then you're not going to get good photos. Your photos are going to be worthless. So it'd be nice if the autofocus was better. The next generation of the X-Trans sensor, which is already in the new X100S, has phase detect right on the sensor and hopefully that will improve the autofocus performance. The other issue with the X-E1 is the lack of lenses. This 18 to 55 f2.8 to f4 zoom is awesome. But for my taste, for a camera like this, a small camera that I'm going to use for travel photography, street photography, or in a backpack, it's too short. I want an 18 to 135 or even an 18 to 200. 18 to 200 for an APS-C camera is pretty much my favorite zoom length. If you're a prime lens photographer, then there's a pretty good range, but telephoto wise, it maxes out at 60 millimeters right now. That's a 90 millimeter equivalent. So even there, we need a longer telephoto lens. But this is a new system and we will see new lenses as it grows. The bottom line is I give the Fujifilm X-E1 two thumbs up. One, two. I love the camera. Even with the autofocus problems, I can work around them no problem. That's a wrap for my Fujifilm X-E1 review. Hope you found it useful. Remember that there's more online on the website. There's a big gallery of photos, more than you saw in this video, and there are studio sample photos as well at high res You can download them, print them, do whatever you want with them, pixel peep to your heart's content. And if you happen to own an XC1, we'd love it if you visited photographyreview.com and wrote a review for your camera. We need more reviews. Your reviews are the foundation of the site. I am Photo John for photographyreview.com. See you next time.